Hey guys, I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shaka and I welcome you to my channel. I'm so grateful as always that you guys are listening, subscribing, commenting. I appreciate the support that you guys have been sending my way, the energy and the joy and the love. In this video, I want to speak to you guys about Ayurvedic doshas. I don't know if you guys are actually even aware of what this, what this means. Uh, and if you are, obviously let me know what your dosha is. But I wanted to give you a brief spiel on it because I think it's so, it has been so useful for me specifically in, in garnering what I should eat, how I should live, and kind of giving me a few brief guidelines on you know, what my body type is and what I, how I should treat my body. Now, of course, this is not, a, it's not like a Bible, right? It's not like you have to follow these rules that the doshas are set up as. It doesn't mean that if you don't do it that you're going to die or something like that. It doesn't mean that if you don't do it that uh, you know, someone's going to smite you, obviously. These are just kind of guidelines, very loose guidelines that have been set up for us in order to learn more about our type, our body type, Ayurvedically, which is an Indian style of Indian medicine. Uh, you know, not Chinese medicine, but Indian medicine from India. <laughs> and it's five or six thousand years old or more, uh, extremely powerful, it has been at least for me and has been for a lot of other people. So I wanted to share this with you. Ayurvedic doshas are a way of classifying different body types based on different criteria. Okay, And there's only three types, but you can also mix and match. So you can be two types at once or you can be th all three types at once. Um, but there are three types, mostly three body types, that Ayurvedic doshas or Ayurvedic terms defined as. All right, so they uh, divide them up into three body types, and the first one would be Pitta, so P-I-T-T-A, Pitta, and these are the fiery creatures. These are the ones with a lot of energy and a lot of um, fire in them, and uh, you know their digestive system is great. They are always running hotter than most people around them. They also have a very miso type of body structure where their shoulders are bigger and their uh, waist is smaller. You know, they have that bodybuilder kind of structure. Um, and so that's the pitta type. Okay? The second type would be the kapha, which is K-A-P-H-A, -A, kapha. And these are the more grounded people, the grounded types, right? Where they have a lot, they have a little bit harder time losing weight and they gain weight very easily. Uh, and they're of course very grounded, so they're able to be very earthy. You know, they're able to relax and have less anxiety and just do their own thing, right? So that's the kapha type, and their body type is very much, um, I would say, an endo type, where they're able to. They're usually, you know, they're smaller here, but they usually have a bigger hip to waist ratio, where they are storing a lot of fat or or, or you know, body around their waist, around their hips, right? So they have that kind of apple shape. Now, of course, this is not written in stone, but this is just a general idea of it. Now, the last one is the Vata type, V-A-T-A, -A, Vata. And these are the ones who are the ectomorph types, where they're really, t I mean, not tall, but really skinny, usually very skinny, very airy. They spend a lot of time in their head, usually very anxious they need to ground themselves, they need to do a lot of grounding exercises in order to feel like they're in their bodies, otherwise they forget that they have a body, they forget that they are a body, they forget to eat, they forget to drink water, they forget to take care of themselves. And if you are any INFJs listening to this, probably a lot of you guys are going to resonate with the Vata type, and I am a Vata Pitta mix. Um, so obviously you can be mixes of two types, as I said, the three types. And so watas obviously need a lot of grounding, right? And so those are the three types of body types that are, or doshas as they call them, that the IRA, the um, regimen kind of divides people up into. Now, of course, when you're going to think about it, it's even more, uh, it's harder to believe than even the MBTI where everyone in the world is divided into 16 types. In this one, you're only divided into three types and perhaps maybe eight or nine, depending on the different mixes that you can have. Still, I have found for myself when I've read up on the different types and how you can balance out because that's the main goal with the Ayurvedic doshas is to look at where you are and to figure out what your type is and figure out how you can be more sattvic which is more balanced in your type right so if I'm a Vata Pitta mix for example I'm going to use myself as a as a model 
And so I'm a Wata Pitta mix and I've usually been very much Wata. So when I was younger, I was more Wata than I am right now. I have more fat on me now. I have more grounding in me now. So I'm again moving more towards Pitta than Wata, but I have pretty much a balance of the two mostly. And so as I said, Wata is a very airy and I noticed that from myself is that it's very hard for me to ground myself. I spend all of my time in my head thinking, imagining, dreaming, you know, reflecting and I forget as I said that I have a body I forget that I need to eat I forget that I need to drink water I forget that I need to sleep you know I get into my head I get into my work and I forget all of those things the main thing for a Wata is to balance themselves using grounding so you have to do a lot of yoga or you have to eat grounding foods there are grounding foods out there Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic type of foods where they're extremely grounding for exam example um, ginger or not Yes, ginger or cinnamon, um, turmeric. There are certain foods that are extremely grounding um, that will help you feel more in your body, that will help you feel like you are here rather than in your head. Right? I have found for myself is that I know when I get extremely anxious or extremely wata is that I haven't eaten enough, eaten enough food or I have forgotten to eat. So as soon as I have a meal, I feel that the food in my belly helps ground me, helps me pull back into my body, helps me feel my body and helps me feel on this earth. Right? So one of the th techniques that I use a lot is that I will, if I feel like, oh my God, I feel all in my air, in my head, I feel airy, I feel anxious, I feel like I'm not in my body anymore, I will usually ask myself, have you had any food yet? Right? Have you had anything to eat yet? And a lot of times the answer is no. Or usually what happens with us as Watas is that we need to have grounding foods and a lot of times because we are in a rush we'll end up eating non-grounding foods like having a smoothie like a green smoothie or having a smoothie or having a fruit shake or having something on the go something cold where those kind of foods are not really grounding for us we need warm nutrient rich fatty foods in order to help us ground us right and so fat uh, healthy fats like olive oil and coconut oil has been a major part of my diet i drink a lot of coconut milk Coconut milk is a major part of most of the soups and stews that I make, which are really good for grounding and good for watas. I eat a lot of soups and stews. Um, and so as I said, coconut milk is a, is a good one. Coconut water is a good one for balancing our, our electrolytes out because we don't drink enough water sometimes. And so all of those kind of things, all of those things will help you ground yourself as a wata. Now the other side of me is pitta. So it's, a, it's obviously an interesting combination. And I go, through, I go through cycles where I'm seesawing back between pitta and vata. And the pitta side of me is very fiery and intense and has a lot of energy and wants to go and do things all the time. And you can notice that with pittas. Pittas have a very intense eye gaze. So, you know, we, we look into your eyes and like, you're like, all right, back off, buddy, back off. <laughs> um, and so that's a fire in us, right? We have a lot of fire in us and we want to do a lot of things we want to change the world we want to use our energy to make a mark on this planet and all of that stuff comes from pitta now of course in order to balance out the pitta you have to quell the fire a little bit you have to tamp it down you don't you don't want to completely remove it obviously because then you're going to be kapha but you want to re reduce the heat a bit on the fire right? just reduce it a little bit and so of course you're going to be eating cooling foods which is interesting because my wata doesn't like cooling foods but my pitta needs it right and so obviously the, the key to these doshas is to realize where you are at and you can fluctuate quite a lot in one day really you can fluctuate just within a day back and forth so within one day you might wake up and you're very pitta because it was really hot at night and you're like you know you feel fiery and you had a lot of dreams where you, you were dealing with a lot of fiery stuff and so you wake up your pitta so you have a cold drink or you have a cold smoothie to start off and as time goes on during the day and the afternoon you feel very vata because you haven't had any food yet or you feel our airy because of the work you've been doing and so you have a grounding nutrient rich fatty meal and then that grounds you back and then all of a sudden you feel pitta again so you know you kind of fluctuate not only within obviously your lifetime so you're not always going to be vata pitta i'm not always going to be vata pitta i might move back and forth between different types but not only do you fluctuate within your lifetime within a year within a month but within a day itself as well and so obviously the key is to observe yourself and to watch yourself and to figure out, all right, where am I in the pe pendulum right now? Where am I in the swing of things? Am I on this end of the spectrum? Am I on this end of the spectrum? Am I in the middle? Am I balanced? Am I feeling balanced? If not, 
what can I do to balance myself out? Right? And so in order to quell the fire for pittas, you have to drink a lot of cold water or cooling foods like cucumbers, cucumbers and um, celery, things like that, that are cooling on your body. Um, you can, there's also spices that you can eat in order to cool your body. I don't remember which one it is right now because usually what I spend all of my time doing is eating a lot of turmeric in golden, golden milk. Golden milk, if you guys have never heard of it, it's basically a mix of any kind of milk, whatever you guys want, coconut, almond, cow's milk, if you're drinking cow's milk, and you add a little bit of turmeric to it, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of honey, and you mix it up and you heat it up and you drink that, that's golden milk, and that is extremely sattvic, so it helps balance out all of the different doshas, and so it's a really good to, good drink to have occasionally, once a week, once every two days, something like that. And so the reason that I wanted to do this is because I don't obviously have all the answers with regards to this. I only know it works for me specifically, right? And I, everyone's a unique combination of the different types. So I've kind of figured out what works for me and I do those things in order to balance myself out. But I wanted you guys to perhaps have this tool and go look into it if you don't know your dosha. There are online tests you can do and you can figure out what your dosha is, what your, if you're a pitta or a kapha or your mix of kapha, pitta, vata, whatever it might be, right? And you might figure that out and then you can kind of get feedback on those different types and figure out how to balance yourself out, how to become more sattvic, because that's obviously the key to all of this. We don't want to be at one spectrum or and one extreme or another. We want to be in the middle. We want to be balanced. And there are things that you can do to balance yourself. Now, of course, it's going to be obviously seesawing. So you bring yourself a little bit closer to vata to balance yourself out and you go too far deep in. And then you again move a little bit closer to pitta and then you go too far. So you kind of have to kind of like keep on working on it continuously. So go, go check out online, go check out what your dosha is. And if you know your dosha is, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. I think this is one of those tools that you can use in order to learn more about yourself. So hopefully this helps. And I shall see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.